record. I want to welcome you all to tonight's animal science webinar. These webinars are happening monthly. Animal science ha webinars happen on the fourth Monday of the month at seven o'clock p.m. And right now we're covering some things that are really going to help you get prepared um, for your county fairs or if you have other goals for your project areas. Um, the, these webinars will help you to reach those goals. Uh, but we're also in the future going to cover some other things that will expose our Kansas 4-H youth to opportunities in the livestock industry. But for tonight, we're going to focus on feeding your 4-H meat goat. As a reminder, we'd like for you to keep your microphones muted and your cameras turned off. That will help us to conserve bandwidth. We will record and we'll post this on the Kansas 4-H website. It will also be emailed out to everyone that, that registered. We do ask that if you have questions, you put them in the chat and we'll address those at the end of the evening. And we ask that you also complete the survey that is posted on the Kansas 4-H website. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our presenter this evening. Our presenter is Justin Goodnow. He is our Barber County Agriculture Extension Agent. And I'm going to let Justin tell you a little bit about himself and go ahead and get started. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Justin Goodnow. I am one of the extension agents in Barber County. And uh, <clears throat> that is along the Kansas Oklahoma state line. And uh, we've been raising meat goats uh, personally. We bought our first set of goats in uh, 2019. And, and our intentions when we got into the goat business was to raise uh, goats with in mind the youth component for livestock shows only. I know some folks get into the goat business and they uh, start with a commercial herd and they try to work their way into show goats. But our, our goal all along was to raise a quality uh, meat goat for, for youth livestock shows. And so we've done that for several years. Uh, we don't push it as aggressively as we used to, uh, but we're still out there selling a few every now and again. So I would tell you, uh, before we really get into uh, the ins and outs of feeding your your meat goat, you know, what we want to keep in mind is, is really what is your goal? And, and this should be done prior to purchasing your goat. You know, is your goal just to show at the county fair uh, or do you want to go on and, and show at the state fair or KGLS or even something on the national level? And the reason that's important is uh, you can gear uh, your animal to those specific shows through your feed program. For instance, if, you're, if your goal is county fair in Kansas, most of those are in July, and you may be wanting to purchase a goat that's a little bit older, something that's a fall born or early winter born. That way you can finish him uh, in the appropriate amount of time during the summer. Whereas if it's a state level show like the KJLS or state fair, you may want to look at a, little, uh, a younger goat, something that's born after the first of the year. Uh, it really depends on your knowledge of, of feeding those animals uh, but the main thing is knowing what your target show is and then dialing that goat in at the right time to have him finished and, and looking at it, looking his best at the show you want. So uh, really quickly, we're going to touch on facilities of, of housing your goat. And something I would share with you is it, it doesn't really matter if you have indoor or outdoor facilities. Uh, the main thing is is that these pens are easily accessible, that the goat has plenty of space to move around, that there's access to shade and shelter to get out of the weather, uh, and you, that you keep clean bedding around, um, and we want good airflow in those shelters. Uh, so if you're gonna house one outside, here's a couple of examples. Uh, these pens don't have to be anything extravagant. Uh, the easier, the simpler, uh, design the better in my opinion. As you can see on these, they're wire panels. Uh, they're small square, four by four. Therefore, a goat cannot stick its head through the panel. You know, keep in mind goats are very, very curious animals. And so if you've got uh, cattle panels or something with big squares, they're going to want to stick their heads through there. And we, we want to keep them from doing that. Uh, they can really do some damage to themselves if they get stuck. But these are small square panels. These runs, the widest of any of them is 10 foot wide. Um, 
most of these, like the one in the middle, it's about six foot wide. It's about 20 foot long. And the reason it's that way is it makes it easier to catch that animal when you go in the pen. Uh, if you have an indoor pen, for instance, like on the left-hand side of the, the screen, it's very important that you have good airflow through those facilities. Uh, you can see a fan up in the corner of that picture. Uh, if it's extremely hot, you may wanna have uh, some type of cooling device in there uh, to keep that thing uh, a little bit cooler than, than what it is outside. But the main thing, make it easy, easy accessible and make sure they got move, room to move around. Once we got our, our pin situated, uh, some of the things we want to make sure we got, first and foremost, uh, we want a salt block provided to them. We want the feeders, individual feeders, uh, about shoulder high, so those goats aren't eating too low, like they're too close to the ground or having to stand up on their hind legs to eat. I know some people do that. Uh, I just prefer to have a feeder shoulder height, depending on the goat to where they can stand there comfortably and eat. Uh, most importantly, we want clean, fresh water. Uh, water is the most important thing that you can provide that animal. If they're not drinking water, they're not going to eat. So the purpose of the salt block is we encourage them to, eat, to drink more water by licking the salt block. Um, a good habit to get into is we change waters out every time we feed a goat we change and put fresh water in that pen for them. And we also separate goats when we feed because we want to make sure each goat gets specifically what we want them to have. So you can see in the big picture, there's two separate goats, two separate pens eating exactly what we wanted them to have. <clears throat> when we go to looking at our feed for our goats, You've got options of pelleted feed or textured feed, and uh, it's really up to you what you want to feed. You know, I prefer a pellet feed. That way I know every time the goat eats, it's getting exactly what I want it to in that pellet. Uh, most importantly, we want a complete balanced ration, which means we want our protein anywhere from 14 to 16%. We want our fat anywhere from about two and a half to three and a half percent. Uh, we want adequate fiber for them in that. We want a mineral packet. Um, and we want the freshest feed we can get. Uh, I think it's very important that you get the freshest feed you can get. Think of it in terms of yourself. Would you, would you prefer to eat fresh food or something that's been dried out and sitting around for a while? It's, it's just that simple. So when you get your feed, it's up to you what you want to get. Make sure you read the labels. Uh, Sometimes there's going to be warnings on the label. Sometimes there's going to be cautions on the label. There's a couple examples up here on the screen. Uh, we've got um, just a co-op ration of GOAT 14, and we've got a label for Show Ride Advancer Plus. And these are similar in respects that one of them is a 14% protein, one of them is a 15%, one of them is a 2.5% on the fat, uh, 3, 3.5%. The main difference is, is the show right label. If you look on that, it says medicated and it's medicated uh, with rumensin. And so therefore on that label, it has some warnings that this is designed for goats. There are certain animals that need to stay away from this. It can be very detrimental to them. Also, there's a caution statement on there with the amount of selenium that's in that ration they advise you not to add any additional selenium. So it's very important that we read our labels to make sure we're not uh, gonna do any harm to our animal or to any other animals. So when we look at these two rations themselves, uh, me personally, I would prefer the show right uh, feed because it is medicated. Uh, that rumensin is, is, is good stuff. Uh, we've got some research, research that shows that uh, the animals uh, utilize their feed better with rumensin in it. Plus, it's helping prevent coccidiosis, which can be a concern with goats. So if you're feeding uh, a ration that's not medicated or doesn't have anything in there to help prevent, you know, coccidiosis, 
then you want to be thinking about uh, maybe treating that or doing some prevention on your own uh, each month. Also on that label, for goats, it's very important that you look at the calcium to the phosphorus ratio. And on these labels, we always want it, and, and the, these labels are both good. We want the calcium to phosphorus ratio to be at least two to one. Uh, this will help eliminate or decrease the chances of your goat getting urinary calculi. Uh, also on these labels, both of them, um, I don't know how well you can see the ingredients, but they both have ammonium chloride in them. And uh, ammonium chloride is something that they'll add to a feed ration also to lessen the chances of urinary calculi uh, because that can be a problem uh, with goats. Uh, the other thing we want to make sure that we provide to them other than our feed is some roughage. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, that's just a plain Jane uh, prairie grass. There's nothing fancy to it. All that is, is for is for gut health. Uh, that's about how much we will feed each goat, and that's only certain days of the week that we do that. We call that like a spaghetti serving size of hay. Uh, some people may call it like a bird's nest, but it doesn't take too much. Uh, in my opinion, when we're feeding goats, we want that feed to do the work. We don't want them getting too full on hay. The hay is just uh, strictly to keep the gut going good. That's very important. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been buying feed here lately, but uh, it doesn't matter what goat feed you get. It's very expensive right now. Uh, so it's very important that we take good care of that. Feed storage is, is uh, very important. If you don't have uh, an enclosed room that you can keep it dry and clean, I'd recommend getting some tubs like you see on the left-hand side of the screen. Those tubs are very affordable about any any farm store, you can see a white one and a black one. They've got lids that latch down and keep them sealed up. Uh, and it keeps that feed fresh, keeps it clean, and uh, it prevents rodents or any other type of contaminants from getting inside of there. Uh, when we go to feed our goats, uh, I recommend weighing your feed. Uh, and I do that strictly for accuracy. I wanna know uh, how much we're giving an animal because we may have goats that are in different stages of life uh, that'll get different amounts of feed for where they're at. So there's a couple of pictures right there of, of two different size cups. And what they're setting on is just a, a very simple scale that you can uh, put on there to, to find out how much you are giving them. Some feed labels will have recommendations of how many pounds you should feed your animal and so this would help you get very accurate on that. The one thing I would tell you is different feeds uh, have different size pellets. Therefore, the weight of the feed may be different. So for instance, just because that cup in the middle, when it's filled to the top, is three quarters of a pound of the feed, if I change rations and fill it to the top, it doesn't guarantee that that's still going to be three quarters of a pound of feed. That's why we weigh those. That scale right there uh, was very cheap. You can usually find those in secondhand stores for little or nothing. They're a great, great investment. Prior to weighing your feed, uh, put that cup on that scale empty and get that weight. And what you would do is adjust your scale to get that weight off of there. Then put your feed in your cup and you'll get your actual feed weight. So uh, just remember different feeds are going to have different weights. Don't just rely on your cup every single time to think you're feeding accurately. One of the things that we do is we write everything down. Uh, simple rule, don't think it, ink it. So if you look at this marker board that's up on the wall, uh, we'll just kind of work our way through it. Uh, it's going to tell you where goats are, how many's on there, what our goals are for our show goats. You look at the calendar, and on Sundays and Wednesdays, it has an H on it. That means we're going to feed a spaghetti serving size of hay to our show goats on Sundays and Wednesdays. Also on Sundays, there's a star there. That means on every Sunday, we're going to take our water buckets, and we're going to take a brush, and we're going to scrub those buckets out really good 
at least once a week. If we have to do it more than that, then obviously we will, but at minimum once a week, we're gonna scrub them out really good, get any type of grime out of them to make sure they've got good clean water every time they get a drink out of it. On Saturdays, uh, there's a W in that for every Saturday. Every Saturday, we're gonna put our goats on the scale and we're gonna get an actual weight on them just to see how they're utilizing their feed, see how they're growing. The main thing uh, is down below that, we have, uh, it, it as a series of lines, it says feed and it has pin one, pin two, pin three, and then barn one. That tells us where our goats are and what each goat's gonna get. So for instance, there's one goat in pin one, he's gonna get a full cup of feed, He's going to get a little bit of a supplement that we're going to use, and he's going to get that twice a day. More importantly, he's going to get fed the same time every day. So if we're feeding two times a day, for instance, if I feed at 6.30 in the morning, I'm going to feed again at 6.30 p.m. That's, that's what we do is we try to space them out an equal amount of time. And we're going to try to do that every single day. We want to be con consistent. We want to be intentional with our feed, we want those those goats getting in a routine. I know some people that uh, will feed three times a day. They'll feed the same amount that they would have two times, but they will reduce the amount each time they feed to, to do it three times. And that may be at 6.30 in the morning, 12.30 in the afternoon and 6.30 in the evening. Uh, but the main thing is be consistent. Every time you feed, feed at the same time. Don't skip on your feedings. Uh, so if, as you look through those, those feeding instructions, for instance, each pen is being fed separately, being fed differently. So it's very important that you write those down that way. If you're out of town for some reason, somebody comes over to help feed for you, they know who gets what. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner of that calendar, uh, we, we track our weights. So that goat in pen one, for example, he's weighing 53 pounds. The goat in pen two is weighing 42 pounds. And the two goats in pen three, they're small enough that we're not worried about weighing them yet. Uh, so there's no weights on them. We use, uh, you can use a variety of scales to weigh your goats. In the picture there is, is just an old school uh, scale that you walk them in, get your weight on there pretty easy sliding the dial back and forth on the arm. I know folks that use digital scales. Uh, I've known some people that used bathroom scales, uh, but we like to track our weights of our goat every single week. That way we know what we're doing, how our feed program's working. Another important thing uh, with your goat to make sure they're, uh, let me back up one slide real quick. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, in, on that marker board, it has a little note that says first of the month, trim feet, deworm, and delice. So the first day of every month, we're gonna get our goats out, we're gonna trim their feet, keep them good and sound, we're gonna deworm them, and we're gonna delice them. So when we start looking at parasite control, Here's a few examples of some products you could use. We like to rotate our dewormers. Uh, so you can see in the, on the left-hand side of this, uh, there's a bottle that's an all-natural dewormer. There's a bottle in the middle of Valbazin, which is the white dewormer. And then on the far right is Cydectin sheep and goat dewormer. And that's a, what we would call a clear dewormer. We would not use the same one each time. So for instance, if we use the all natural dewormer in May, we would use the white one, the Valbazin in June. And then depending on if our finish point is the county fair and it's terminal, we need to pay attention to the Cydectin label to see what kind of withdrawal time it has to see if we should use that as a dewormer or not uh, leading to the county fair. Because if it has too much of a withdrawal time, uh, we will not use that. It's only if it's, if it exceeds the withdrawal time, do we use that? And when we deworm goats, uh, we use what's called a drencher, drench gun. There's a couple examples up here on the screen. They're a very simple device that you could buy at about any farm store. 
if you can't find them, sometimes you can find uh, that bottom piece that goes in their mouth. It'll attach to a, a basic syringe. You can use that as well. But we we drench goats uh, with that dewormer. We 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 draw our dewormer up in the drench gun uh, to the label recommendation. We don't we don't do anything outside of what the label recommends. And then we slide that inside their mouth over their tongue, and then we squirt that over their tongue uh, like they're getting like they're getting a drink. And we'll do that once a month. But when we're leading up to our our final show, uh, we uh, for sure, pay attention to the label to see when the withdrawal time on that product is. And we may or may not use that dewormer that last month, depending on the withdrawal time. If you're not, uh, if you're using a feed that's not medicated to help for the prevention of coccidiosis, one of the things you may want to do is get you a bottle of cord and drench them with that about five cc's each month for the prevention of coccidiosis because. All of those things will play into how effective your feed program is. If you have a goat that uh, gets parasitic, whether it's with coccidiosis or, or barber pole worms, uh, that will affect the way they gain, the way they grow, the way they look. It can, it can run things real quick. So it's very important that you have a little program in place to go along with the feed so that you can maximize that goat's potential. One of the things that you may want to do is implement an exercise program with your feed program. These show goats are little athletes. And so as we're growing them along, you need to be thinking in terms of little athletes. Uh, I like to compare them to sprinters in track. Sprinters are usually muscled up and really quick and really athletic versus somebody that's running a marathon. They're usually a little bit uh, longer, a little bit leaner, not not they don't usually have near the muscle definition that a sprinter has. Meat goats uh, are just what they say. They are a meat goat. They're designed to put muscle on. Um, and so the more muscle we can build on them, the better. If you have a goat that is putting a lot of condition on or getting fat, uh, fat is not desirable in goats. If, if you've got one that's pretty soft when you put your hands over his ribs or down his top line, uh, you better get to exercising that goat because once they start getting fat, it's hard to stop that. They get fat from the inside out. So once it's on the outside, you're in a lot of trouble. There's various ways you can exercise a goat. You can run them down your driveway. Uh, I know people that have tracks that they run them in or exercise them in. And you can see on the picture, there's a picture uh, on the screen there, there's a picture of a treadmill. And any of those will work. The main thing is, that when you exercise them, be sure it's on good flat ground. There's no rocks or anything like that that would hurt them or make them trip. And you don't want to overdo it. Uh, this is not intended to be a torture chamber by any means. All we're trying to do is keep these goats in shape and help build muscle, help, help them look the best they can. So as you can see uh, on the picture here, with this treadmill, there's two doors. There's one on the side, there's one on the end of it. So this is designed to walk it in on the side of the, the treadmill. And depending on what you want to do, you can put them on uh, facing the front of the treadmill or put them on facing the back side of the treadmill. It does two different things. One's going to exercise the entire body. One's going to uh, mostly exercise the hind legs, the rear end, in that back, uh, and, and that would be utilizing it backwards. You would teach them to walk backwards and drive off their hind legs, but you just do not want to overdo it. You've got to train them to, to, to run on those. You know, first you'll teach them to walk, then you can train them to run on them. But most importantly, don't go too fast, don't go too long. It's very important that you listen to breath, that you pay attention to that goat, it, it, the goat will tell you when it's time to get off of there. Um, but any of those methods work. Um, the main thing is, is get the adrenaline going in those goats. Short, quick bursts of energy. We want them sprinting as fast as they can. And, you know, a rule of thumb is if you exercise two days, 
give them a day off. They're no different than us. Uh, very few people work out every single day on the same part of the body over and over and over. We have to give the body an opportunity to rest and heal. It's the same way uh, with the goats. I didn't uh, include it in here, but I did touch a little bit on it on the marker board. There are a variety of supplements that you can use with your goats. It, it all depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, I don't endorse or recommend any particular one. I'll just tell you, there's a lot of good ones out there. Depending on what you want to what what you're wanting to do with your animal, there's something out there for you. Uh, I would do your homework on it, make sure that that's what you want to use, and then always follow the label. Uh, the label is the law. Um, there's been enough research done on the products that they know better than us on how to use them. So always follow those. So with that, we will open it up. If anybody's got any questions, I'd be glad to stick around and answer anything you got. I put that into the chat, or should we just <coughs> say it out loud? You can just go ahead and put them, put it into the chat. But Rex, would you um, clarify your question for us, please? Yeah. So the question in the chat says, is, is in that make the meat bad? What I'm unclear on what your question is. Well, the I I went to like a place about meat and it like said if you made it run a lot, the animal run a lot, it makes like the meat like not taste as good. Okay. It gave me a black or something. Okay. So your question is if you if you run them too much, will it make the meat bad? I've, I've not heard that. Um, what it usually does is, is firms the meat up, builds muscle, um, and that is desirable. Um, we just actually had a couple former uh, show goods butchered, and I can tell you uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the meat, and, and I know they was in a pretty good exercise program. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? We'll give you all a, ch a chance to put those in the chat. Looks like maybe that's all of our questions for tonight, Justin. So once again, I'd like to thank Justin for sharing his knowledge with us this evening. Um, and a reminder to you all that this will be posted on the 4-H Animal Science webpage. Also, we will send the recording out to everyone as well. We'd appreciate if you would take the opportunity um, to answer the survey. Looks like we did have we did have a couple more questions come in. Sorry about that, Justin. Um, how late can you wait to cut a goat to be a weather is the next question. Uh, a rule of thumb with what we do is, is we do that at about eight weeks of age. Um, we use the bander and it seems that they're the appropriate size to get a band on. Um, as far as anything after that, um, it would be, it would be pretty tough. Uh, I would, I would tell you, we don't do anything prior to that. We want those goats uh, to develop that urinary tract uh, as much as they can in the first eight weeks prior to doing that, because there, there is a little bit of information out there that if you, if you ban too early, uh, and don't let that that track properly develop, you can increase the chances of urinary calculi. So we, rule of thumb is we wait eight weeks. And uh, one of the things that we do is uh, we will give them a little bit of a painkiller. Uh, we use meloxicam, we'll give them a little bit of pill. We chase that with a little bit of water to get it in them. And that helps them through that process to where it doesn't uh, hurt them near as bad. 
Okay, thank you. The next question is, do you use a custom feed ration from your local co-op? Um, on occasion, we have. Um, if we're wanting to be serious about a show, uh, what we personally use is that show right advancer plus it's a it's a very good feed it's a very con concentrated feed that it doesn't take very much to get what you want out of it um, the main difference is like it versus what i could get at my local co-op i will have to feed more of that co-op feed to get what i want with less of the show right uh, that's a little experiment that we've done on our done on our own and I also like the fact that it does have rumensin in it uh, for that prevention. Uh, and, and like I said, that rumensin, whether it's in cattle or goats, we've shown that they just utilize that feed so much better. Um, not saying you can't use a custom feed ration. It all depends on what you want and uh, what your experience is with it. We have used a ration from our co-op before, but we've mostly used that on does. And, uh, and we've had to use, um, put a little program in for coccidiosis as well because it wasn't medicated. Okay, and looks like the last question we have in there says, this is the first year, and I'm not sure, maybe that's supposed to say how to start. So um, if you were the one to submit that question, if you could unmute real quick and just clarify your question for us. This was we're going. This is the first year. Where do we start? Well, uh, well, I'd say start where you're at. You know, uh, depending on what your goals are. Uh, if, for instance, if your goal is just to have. The experience of showing your goat at the county fair, um, start with that. Uh, get your complete balanced ration feed, get the freshest feed you can get that's within your budget. Uh, and that's one of the things that we really didn't touch on, but you know, you, you need to have a budget going into the project. You know, how much do you want to spend on your animal? How much are you wanting to spend on feed? And then you work at it, you know, be consistent with everything. Um, we, we try to time our feedings uh, with our goats to where they consume that feed, that feed pretty quick. We don't want the feed sitting around in the, in the, in the pan all day long because uh, you never know if, if it's outside, if birds are going to come by and get in it. Birds are great spreaders of disease, or if you got barn cats or whatever else. Uh, we want those goats to consume their feed as quickly as possible. So we'll start with what they can consume. So just for instance, on that marker board, we have one goat that we're feeding a heaping cup full each feeding. The other one's a little bit smaller, so he's getting just a, a simple cup full. The other two are even smaller than that, so they're getting three quarters of a cup. And that's designed that way because they will consume that in a timely manner and not leave anything. And they'll be ready to eat when we come out the next time. So uh, you start where you're at, make adjustments as you go. And each of those will, will be adjusted as those goats grow. Uh, those ones that are getting three quarters of a cup right now, the one that's getting just a, a full cup, those will be adjusted as those goats get bigger. Um, so I, I hope that answers some of that question. Thank you. And the next question, we have a goat that refuses to eat pellet goat grower, but eats regular goat grain. What would you recommend to feed him? So that's kind of a tricky question. Um, not knowing what brands those are. Uh, we do hear of, of, of people that'll take a goat from us and then transition it onto another feed. And so that's something to keep in mind when you go to buy your, your goat. And I didn't touch on it earlier is ask the person that you're buying it from, what are they feeding? You know, if you like the way that goat looks, it may be in your best interest 
to continue to feed that brand of feed. Uh, if it's not in your best interest and you want to feed it something else, then you, you have to go through a transition period of blending those feeds together and then gradually taking out the one that you don't want to get them onto the desired feed of your choice. So uh, if that doesn't work, there are some, some little supplements and stuff that you can put in those feeds uh, that can entice them to eat. Uh, sometimes uh, we'll use a product called Glue Coat. It's a liquid product that will blend in with the feed. And, it, and we've had very good luck with uh, getting anything to eat with that. Uh, so, and I don't know if this would apply to that question or not, if you have a goat that's not really eating, one, check to make sure uh, it doesn't have parasites. If you're not familiar with how to do that, there's a very simple uh, thing you can do. It's, it's, they call it a FAMACHA score. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, get in touch with your local extension agent. They probably have a card or access to one, but you basically, uh, you will check the eyelids of your goat. You would gently push your thumb on the eyelid of the goat and then move it down to the bottom eyelid and it makes those membranes inside the eyelid pop and it reveals the color within there. What you wanna be seeing is bright red. That, that shows that they're not anemic. So if you're not seeing that color, uh, you need to deworm your goat because that can have an effect on whether they, they're eating or not, or just make sure they're not sick. Uh, it's very important that you have a good relationship with your veterinarian um, if you don't have a veterinarian that knows much about goats, get in touch with a goat breeder uh, that does. Uh, that, that they're great resources on, on helping getting those animals going. It may be a deal. If that goat's sick, you may have to treat it. Um, just a, a standard rule with goats is if you doctor a goat, uh, it's best to follow it up with a, a dose of thiamine or B-complex to keep that appetite, that appetite stimulated because goats are very finicky. Uh, although they are ruminant, they're not like cattle. They are very, they're very condensed versus uh, the size of a cattle's gut. And so uh, B-complex and thiamine are both very good uh, tools to use if to stimulate an appetite if one is sick. The next question is, uh, we have a goat that has urinary calculi. They had him a week before it happened and took him to the vet and they had to cut him. Can they still show him? Uh, that depends on the rules of your show. Um, I, I'm gonna ask a silly question, but did they reroute it or just cut it? And you can type it in the chat or, or unmute whichever one. Looks like they rerouted it. Okay. I would touch base uh, with uh, your local extension agent and see what the rules are for your particular county fair. Um, I've not seen one that's rerouted being shown. Um, I'm not saying it can't, but it really depends on the rules of the particular county that you're in. And then the next question, we can get total feed as per feed. They're starting, we can get a higher, I think maybe that's product. Um, if you could unmute and clarify that one for us. And I'm not sure the name on that says owner. So if you are on here as owner, if you'll clarify that for us. I can start with this, that uh, if, if, if you're talking about the brand total feed, uh, if that's the feed that you can get, that's a complete balanced ration and the freshest feed you can get, there's nothing wrong with starting with that or utilizing it. Uh, we, we use Showrite uh, because that's what we can get, and that's the freshest feed we can get. I know other people that, that don't have access to it, and they may use an ADM product um, like more grands or amino gain, that's perfectly fine. There's, um, there's no one feed that's being fed that everybody wins with. Uh, there's a variety of good, good products out there. 
the main thing is, is, is we get the feed that we can get the freshest and that fit, that's the closest to us. The next question is, is it okay to feed all goats together at once? Um, I don't recommend that personally. Um, if you have a pen full of goats, traditionally there's, there's one in there that's gonna push everybody else around and eat more than everybody else. So um, it's as simple as this. You throw a pizza in the middle of the room or in the middle of the table and 10 people go at it. The one that's the toughest is gonna to get the most pieces of pizza. That's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, we want each goat to get exactly what we're, we're serving them. And so I recommend feeding goats separately. Um, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Uh, sometimes it's just taking one outside of its pen on a halter and clipping a, a feeder to the outside of the pen where that goat can eat exactly what it wants. I know uh, some, some friends of mine that have individual um, pens where they can load four of them up, up at a time and they feed all four the, at the same time in those individual pens. Uh, the main thing is, is each goat is getting exactly what you want them to get. If you're feeding them all at once and that one starts eating more than everything else, uh, you've got a problem because he's going to be outgrowing everybody. He's going to get a little fatter than everybody else. And, and then you run the chance of the others not getting exactly what they need. They may get malnourished. They may be too green for the show. Uh, it just causes a lot of troubles. And the last question, what if we just have two but are unable to feed them separate? Is it still okay? Well, at that point, it's a personal decision. You know, um, uh, I'll go back to what I just said. There's a very simple solution, and that's putting a halter on one, leaving it outside the pen, tying it up there, and letting it eat from a, a, a feeder clipped to the outside. Um, this is something that you would see usually at a stock show. You know, if we're at our county fair, we'll have two goats in a pen. What we do is when we go to feed, we'll lead one of them outside of there. We put little clips on our feeder where we can adjust it to where we want it. And the, the pins there are small enough squared that the one, neither one can get to the other's feed. Uh, if you do that, do not leave them unattended. Uh, as I've said before, goats are very curious animals and they can get themselves into situations in a hurry that can be detrimental to them. But that's that's what I would recommend because if you're at a county fair like ours or even the state fair, uh, it's best just to leave one out of the pen. If you, if you don't have that option at all, uh, I know people that'll stand in the pen with them to make sure each one gets exactly what you fed them. Is there a protein percent to aim for, also fat content of the feed? Yeah, so you want to kind of target that that 14 to 16 percent protein. Um, and that's just for growing one. You know, I like a feed that's um, around 15, about 15 percent protein and around three to three and a half percent fat. I think that's a very good balanced uh, ration. And that's that's what we feed. If you're wanting to put more cover on one, uh, you can always add a supplement to it to increase that fat content. It, you know, if you need to get one more bloomy, um, if you've got one that's got a little cover on it and you're wanting to kind of burn one down with your exercise program, you can buy some supplements that are a little higher in protein and mix that in with, with their feed also. But, but for growing one, uh, my preference is anywhere in that 14 to 16% protein, and that two and a half to three, three and a half percent fat. So as far as putting cover on, uh, depends on the goat. You know, I, when you go to buy your goats, uh, don't be afraid to talk to the breeder about genetics. Are these genetics that are early maturing or uh, are they later maturing? Or are they, you know, and that will help you in your feed program. So when they start putting cover on, really depends on 
how aggressive you are on your feed, how much you're feeding, and the age of the goat. Uh, the older they get, the easier it's going to be for them to put cover on. Genetics do play a part in that. Um, I know some folks that raise some goats that are a little later maturing, and uh, that's a good question to be asking when you're purchasing, because if your goal, for instance, is a county fair, and this breeder's raising goats that are uh, later mature, and that may not be in your best interest because you may not be able to get them finished at the right time. Our, our goal is to have them in the best possible shape, what we call finished, with the right amount of fat cover on them uh, at our target show. So a good routine to get into is when you get in there with your pen to feed or to walk them around or go to exercise, set that goat up run your hand down the top of it, down its back from its, from its rack, back through its loin, over its ribs, and then uh, what we would kind of look at is the chest or that brisket area. And you will be able to feel if it's got too much fat or not. If you're starting to feel some softness and you're not feeling those ribs, uh, it may be a good time to start exercising. You know, a, a simple solution is compare them to your hand. Uh, if you can feel your knuckles here, uh, they don't have too much cover on them. If you're feeling back here and you're not feeling as much bone, you're feeling uh, more soft tissue, they've got cover on them. And at that point, uh, you may want to start considering exercising to build more muscle and not get them too fat. And if, if he has uh, three goats, one market and two breeding, how should he feed? So uh, those can be fed differently. There, there are two different uh, strategies involved in that. Market, uh, when we look at what we're looking for in a market animal is we're looking at that muscle uh, conformation, structurally correct, uh, the more muscle, the better. When we're looking at breeding animals, we will put a little more emphasis on uh, structural correctness than muscle in a breeding animal. Uh, we want one that's still able to get around and move because they're going to go into a herd and eventually be raising babies. So we want something that's structurally correct there. Uh, what I what we do with breeding animals is we don't we don't build as much muscle. We want them kind of like a heifer. We want them to be broody. We want them to have some, some body to them and some shape. And, we, and it's okay to have a little more cover on them versus a market weather. Uh, they're gonna need that cover for when you go into breeding season and they go into raising babies. So as far as the type of feed, um, you can feed the same type of feed where you may make your changes, the amount that you feed your breeding animal versus your market animal. If you need to get a little bit more cover on them, you up the feed on them, or if they're not at that desired uh, level of, of, of fat or cover, you can add a supplement. Uh, a, a breeding animal is also one that, if you wanna feed a little bit more hay to, you can. Uh, I wouldn't give them free access to it, but instead of maybe feeding on Sundays and Wednesdays, maybe you do it three times a week. Uh, but those are those are some things that I would consider. Is it okay to give your goat treats as you're training them? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we use vanilla wafers, and I I apologize this this presentation that we did here. We had some videos in it, and they would not play, so I took them out. Uh, but that's one of the ways that we, we build a relationship. My, my girls are little, they're 10 years old. I've got twin girls. And so we want them to build a very good relationship with their animal. We don't want that animal fighting them. We want that animal to work with them. And they do that by trust. Some people may disagree with that and they want, they want one that's high strung and operates out of the fear. Uh, we want one that's going to cooperate with us. And so we build trust and we build a relationship 
and we will break them uh, to eat vanilla wafers. Once they've tried them, they love them. Um, and that's a good way. We don't overdo it. We ain't giving them a box. We may give them one at one a day, uh, one every other day. Uh, but that's a little trick you can do also to help them get started leading is if, if you've got them to where they'll eat that vanilla wafer and then you can use that as enticement and as a reward uh, when you're when you're getting those to lead. Uh, and I would I would say when you're going to give a reward, uh, it should be done for good behavior and not just to do it. Don't let them develop bad behaviors and expect a treat. Uh, it should be a reward system, but uh, just don't overdo it on the treats. You know, our main thing is that feed, but by all means, uh, it, it is perfectly fine to give them treats from time to time. Do goats like carrots? Uh, some of them. <laughs> We've, we don't use carrots, but uh, I've heard of people using them. So, yeah, it just depends on the goat. We know some some people have used raisins even for them, but we just like the vanilla wafers are simple and, and easy, and that's what we do. Okay, it looks like that is the end of our questions. Justin, once again, I'd like to thank Justin Goodno for joining us this evening, and thank you to all of you for joining us as well. We will post the recording. It'll be posted a little bit later tonight. We'll also email that out to everyone that registered, and thanks again for joining us. Have a great evening.